Hello, my name is uh, Justin Weeb. I work at the MasterCard Foundation. I'm from Saskatoon, and this is our one-on-one. He, him? I've spent uh, most of the last four years in, in Toronto on uh, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat territory, um, specifically uh, the Mississaugas of the New Credit. Uh, but I'm spending more and more time uh, in my homelands, uh, in Treaty 6, uh, and in uh, Cree and Métis territory in, in Saskatoon. Uh, Indigenous-led pretty much anything. Uh, my work focuses around uh, education, uh, meaningful livelihoods and entrepreneurship, uh, youth leadership, uh, and really just elevating uh, Indigenous knowledge and, and expertise on, on a whole bunch of stuff. Coffee in the morning is, uh, is key to, uh, to starting the day off right, but tea is, uh, tea is everything when it comes to visiting. Uh, anything but Zoom. I'm fine with either, but uh, minimizing Zoom is, is the goal. That's so tough. There's, there's like so many amazing, um, talented artists and creatives. Uh, authors. Uh, but, um, you know, I've been reading uh, Billy Ray Belcourt's uh, newest book, uh, A History of My Brief Body. Um, highly recommend, super amazing, uh, Cree author, poet, uh, academic. Some scrap paper to doodle on. Can't conceive the future of philanthropy without uh, questioning whether um, it should exist, uh, at least in its current form. The future of philanthropy in Canada will be dictated by uh, our ability to reflect, learn, and transform uh, the ways in which we work um, in alignment with uh, equity and justice. Philanthropy can do better by uh, centering the voices, needs, and vision of people and communities who've been left out of uh, Canada's prosperity. Uh, I'm really talking about Indigenous folks, Black folks, uh, other folks of colour, uh, Two-Spirit and LGBTQ uh, individuals. Uh, and folks with disabilities, people who've not benefited from uh, the, the Canada systems in the same way as um, many others. Uh, grant makers should remember that we have tremendous power uh, that's been given to us uh, largely because of a, a broken economic system uh, and, and our own privilege. So we need, to, we need to always remember that. I'm hopeful for the, the next generation of Canadian philanthropy uh, because I've seen people in positions of power um, change. I've seen people's ideas of what philanthropy should be and what it could be um, shift. Uh, and that's amazing. Uh, I've also seen young people uh, within and, and you know, adjacent or outside of the, of the sector doing amazing work. So I'm really just trying to create the space and, and make sure there's the space for, for that work to, to flourish and grow. Uh, devastating, transformative, and uh, and global. Um, you know the, the the COVID pandemic has uh, has uh, deepened uh, inequities. It's been devastating for for many people, families. Uh, it's transformed sort of the ways in which we do things. Uh, as philanthropy, as you know, educators, the government, everyone's been forced to work in different ways. Some good, some bad, uh, and global. It's it's something that has impacted um, every corner of the globe. Uh, and, and ties us together in that. White, powerful, uh, and potential. Um, you know, can't, can't shy away from uh, the history and, and sort of the current reality of, of our sector. Uh, it's overwhelmingly white. Um, we have a tremendous amount of power. Sometimes we, we shy away from that or we don't acknowledge it, um, which, is, which is huge. And I think that's where the last word potential ties in. There's um, there's so much possibility in, in our sector. There's so much possibility for what we can do and how we can support uh, really transformative, innovative, uh, life-changing um, work. So I think there's, there's a potential for us to do more and more of that. In my mind, like what the future of, uh, of philanthropy should be or could be, um, holistic uh, transformation and equity. Um, you know, my hope for the future of philanthropy is that we we take a, a really holistic a systems approach to our work that we recognize all of the, all of the different things at play that we center um, looking at the whole rather than individual components. Um, I think the future of philanthropy, you know, for us to get there, we need to transform uh, everything that we do. And so I think there's, there's potential for that, I'm hopeful. Uh, and lastly is, is a future uh, for philanthropy um, that centers equity, that recognizes where inequity, inequality, um, where certain communities are, disproportionately impacted by um, failures of, of systems um, that we center that. And that's where we invest our resources, our time, our energy um, to creating real equity. 
think the biggest one for me is uh, that philanthropy can actually do uh, a lot of the things we said we couldn't do. Um, we've worked quicker. Uh, we've worked more collaboratively. Um, we've got resources uh, directly in the hands of non-qualified donees, of grassroots leaders, of folks doing important frontline work. So I think that's the, that's the biggest thing is um, we've done things we said we couldn't do. And my hope is that we'll be able to sustain them. It's, it's foundational for me. Um, it's, it, it, if we're not talking about um, equity, if we're not talking about justice, um, and we're not talking about um, pursuing and working towards you know, prosperity for, for everyone, uh, I think we're failing. I think we're, we're just then propping up and, and perpetuating uh, a system that's, that's not working and it's failing people. So um, you know, I, I just, I, every day my, my works, you know, that's, that's in the back of my mind. So uh, I'm just not willing to let um, us not, uh, not center uh, anti-oppression in our work. Um, because then I think we just, we become a, we become a tool of, of sustaining a, a broken system. And um, I'm just not here for that. You know, I think we need to, as, as foundations, as philanthropy, look at um, all the aspects of our, of our work and, and recognize where we, um, where we contribute, um, both in terms of our grant making to supporting movements, um, working against, um, working towards sort of supporting, uh, uh, you know, a just transition and, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, taking care of our, our resources and the planet and each other. Um, I think there's a role for philanthropy uh, in, in, in really supporting that. Um, I think we have a long way to go uh, in, in, in doing that work more effectively. Um, and I think, again, we need, to, we need to recognize the communities and the people who have been doing this work, fighting for climate justice, uh, and the ones who are most impacted when we don't take action uh, and, and get behind, behind those movements. Similar to sort of a, uh, my, my commitment around sort of anti-oppression and uh, anti-oppressive practices, I'm fortunate to work in a, in a, in a foundation, in a, you know, a, a component of work that's centers, um, you know, Indigenous young people, everything that we do is grounded in, uh, you know, addressing inequities for Indigenous youth. And so um, Indigenous rights, Indigenous values, um, you know, concepts of self-determination are, are at the forefront of everything that we do. I think if we, uh, as a sector, are, are sincere and, and real in our commitments around um, reconciliation, I think it's, it's imperative that we, we center um, Indigenous rights, that we center uh, self-determination. And I think there will be tensions there. I think there'll be moments in our, uh, you know, our progressiveness that we might butt up against what that actually means in practice. Uh, and we need to live it out every day, uh, just because we might not as an individual or a foundation agree with what a particular Indigenous community wants to do. Uh, th that's not what it's about. If we believe in, in rights, if we believe in values and we believe in self-determination, uh, we have to put our personal um, vision and aspirations aside and, and get behind the community's goals and aspirations. I think a big part is, uh, is we need to be more open and we need to be more transparent and accountable about um, who we are and what our sector does. I think for many Canadians, they have no idea um, that philanthropy exists. I know I didn't before I you know, stumbled into the sector. Uh, I know my family has very little idea of what I do, you know, on a daily basis. And I think that's not unusual. Um, so I think the ways in which we can talk about our work, that we can demonstrate um, who we are and we can um, really showcase our value in a more public way and, and deepen our, um, our commitment to sort of democratic practices in philanthropy and ensuring the voices of, of folks that we're working to support are included at every aspect of our, of our work. Um, I think it's, it needs to be relational. I think it needs to be uh, more public. And I think we need to um, showcase uh, and demonstrate our, our value to, uh, to the communities that we're working for and with. It needs to go beyond sort of uh, just diversity and, you know, having, uh, you know, folks who, who, uh, who look differently, uh, you know, in, in the sector. I think that's critical. Representation, you know, in my opinion, does matter a lot. Uh, but until we sort of interrogate our practices, the systems that are at play, the ways in which we work, uh, we, we run a risk of, of just having, you know, more Indigenous folks or more Black folks or, you know, queer folks or folks with disabilities, you know, in positions of power. And, and that's important and that matters. I don't want to understate the importance of that work. Um, but if we don't shift and change our systems and the ways in which we work, um, we will be able, we'll, we'll continue to prop up and, and perpetuate a system that's not working for everyone. So I think it needs to, for diversity, equity, inclusion to be sustained, uh, we need to look at all aspects of our work beyond just human resources and representation and um, interrogate our practices and, you know, be open to new and different ways of working.
I'm a bit, you know, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm fortunate. I, I, I'm back home in Saskatchewan right now and uh, I'll be here for a while. And it's, it's a very different sort of environment than uh, when I was in Toronto. Um, but I'm fearful. I'm fearful of what, uh, of how it will continue to impact the folks who are most marginalized. And um, I'm a little bit nervous that we're not going to see the sustained commitments from, from government, from philanthropy that we have, um, you know, for the first wave. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we will. Uh, and I think for philanthropy, we need to continue to show up and, and support the folks who are being hit the hardest um, by the pandemic. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, but, uh, but optimistic that our sector, government and others can continue to show up for people. We need to just radically uh, transform the ways in which we make decisions, who has power and who has uh, decision making authority within our organizations. Um, we need to look deeply at, at alternative sort of forms of, of philanthropy. I think we need to remember that um, philanthropy as it exists today in, in sort of, you know, Canada and the U.S. and sort of Western, Western countries, it's, it, it, there are other forms of philanthropy in the world. Um, you know, and I, I try to come from an orientation of um, philanthropic practices that are, that are in many Indigenous communities of real wealth redistribution of the, 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 um, the obligation, but also sort of the power that comes from, you know, the personal sort of well-being and power that comes from, uh, from gifting and giving. Um, so I think for, for, for us, our sector to really learn from other forms of philanthropy, uh, much older forms of philanthropy, uh, I think can be, can be really important for, for uh, uh, the future of our sector. Yeah, be with your loved ones if you can. Uh, stay safe. Um, you know, remember that, um, you know, there's, there's so much work to do for, for all of us to, to make sure um, that we're building a, a society that's um, just and equitable for all. Um, but we can only do that when we're, we're well ourselves, when we're taken care of, uh, when we're with our loved ones. So, um, yeah, don't forget your families, your friends, your loved ones, uh, you know, during these holidays and, uh, you know, get ready. There's, there's a whole lot more work for us to do uh, in the new year. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to ask hard questions and then to be able to share some thoughts. So I'm excited to, uh, to not watch my own video when it comes out, but to watch everyone else's. Thanks for uh, coming to my one-on-one. -on -one.